Lighting or illumination is the deliberate use of light to achieve a practical or aesthetic effect. Lighting includes the use of both artificial light sources like lamps and light fixtures, as well as natural illumination by capturing daylight. Daylighting is sometimes used as the main source of light during daytime in buildings. This can save energy in place of using artificial lighting, which represents a major component of energy consumption in buildings. Proper lighting can enhance task performance, improve the appearance of an area, or have positive psychological effects on occupants. Indoor lighting is usually accomplished using light fixtures, and is a key part of interior design. Lighting can also be an intrinsic component of landscape projects. History With the discovery of fire, the earliest form of artificial lighting used to illuminate an area were campfires or torches. As early as 400,000 BCE, fire was kindled in the caves of Peking Man. Prehistoric people used primitive lamps to illuminate surroundings. These lamps were made from naturally occurring materials such as rocks, shells, horns and stones, were filled with grease, and had a fiber wick. Lamps typically used animal or vegetable fats as fuel. Hundreds of these lamps have been found in the Lasso Caves in modern-day France, dating to about 15,000 years ago. Oily animals were also used as lamps after being threaded with a wick. Fireflies have been used as lighting sources. Candles and glass and pottery lamps were also invented. Chandeliers were an early form of light fixture. Major reductions in the cost of lighting occurred with the discovery of whale oil and kerosene. Gas lighting was economical enough to power street lights in major cities starting in the early 1800s and was also used in some commercial buildings and in the homes of wealthy people. The gas mantle boosted the luminosity of utility lighting and of kerosene lanterns. The next major drop in price came about with the incandescent light bulb powered by electricity. Over time, electric lighting became ubiquitous in developed countries. Fixtures Lighting fixtures come in a wide variety of styles for various functions. The most important functions are as a holder for the light source, to provide directed light and to avoid visual glare. Some are very plain and functional, while some are pieces of art in themselves. Nearly any material can be used, so long as it can tolerate the excess heat and is in keeping with safety codes. An important property of light fixtures is the luminous efficacy or wall plug efficiency, meaning the amount of usable light emanating from the fixture per used energy, usually measured in lumen per watt. A fixture using replaceable light sources can also have its efficiency quoted as the percentage of light passed from the bulb to the surroundings. The more transparent the lighting fixture is, the higher efficacy. Shading the light will normally decrease efficacy but increase the directionality and the visual comfort probability. Color temperature for white light sources also affects their use for certain applications. The color temperature of a white light source is the temperature in Kelvin of a theoretical black body emitter that most closely matches the spectral characteristics of the lamp. An incandescent bulb has a color temperature around 2,800 to 3,000 Kelvin. Daylight is around 6,400 Kelvin. Lower color temperature lamps have relatively more energy in the yellow and red part of the visible spectrum, while high color temperatures correspond to lamps with more of a blue-white appearance. For critical inspection or color matching tasks, or for retail displays of food and clothing, the color temperature of the lamps will be selected for the best overall lighting effect. Types lighting is classified by intended use as general, accent, or task lighting, depending largely on the distribution of the light produced by the fixture. Task lighting is mainly functional and is usually the most concentrated for purposes such as reading or inspection of materials. For example, reading poor quality reproductions may require task lighting levels up to 1500 lux, and some inspection tasks or surgical procedures require even higher levels. 
Accent lighting is mainly decorative, and tended to highlight pictures, plants, or other elements of interior design or landscaping. General lighting fills in between the two and is intended for general illumination of an area. Indoors, this would be a basic lamp on a table or floor, or a fixture on the ceiling. Outdoors, General lighting for a parking lot may be as low as 10 to 20 lux since pedestrians and motorists already used to the dark will need little light for crossing the area. Methods down lighting is most common, with fixtures on or recessed in the ceiling casting a light downward. This tends to be the most used method, used in both offices and homes. Although it is easy to design it has dramatic problems with glare and excess energy consumption due to large number of fittings. The introduction of LED lighting has greatly improved this by approx. 90% when compared to a halogen downlight or spotlight. LED lamps or bulbs are now available to retrofit in place of high energy consumption lamps. Uplighting is less common, often used to bounce in direct light off the ceiling and back down. It is commonly used in lighting applications that require minimal glare and uniform general illuminance levels. Uplighting uses a diffuse surface to reflect light in airspace and can minimize disabling glare on computer displays and other dark glossy surfaces. It gives a more uniform presentation of the light output in operation. However indirect lighting is completely reliant upon the reflectance value of the surface. While indirect lighting can create a diffused and shadow-free light effect it can be regarded as an uneconomical lighting principle. Front lighting is also quite common, but tends to make the subject look flat as it casts almost no visible shadows. Lighting from the side is the less common, as it tends to produce glare near eye level. Backlighting either around or through an object is mainly for accent. Forms of lighting Indoor lighting forms of lighting include alcove lighting, which like most other uplighting is indirect. This is often done with fluorescent lighting or rope light, occasionally with neon lighting, and recently with lead strip lighting. It is a form of backlighting. Soffit or close-to-wall lighting can be general or a decorative wall wash, sometimes used to bring out texture on a wall, though this may also show its defects as well. The effect depends heavily on the exact type of lighting source used. Recessed lighting is popular, with fixtures mounted into the ceiling structure or so as to appear flush with it. These downlights can use narrow beam spotlights, or wider angle floodlights, both of which are bulbs having their own reflectors. There are also downlights with internal reflectors designed to accept common air lamps which are generally less costly than reflector lamps. Down lights can be incandescent, fluorescent, hid or LED. Track lighting, invented by Lightolia, was popular at one period of time because it was much easier to install than recessed lighting, and individual fixtures are decorative and can be easily aimed at a wall. It has regained some popularity recently in low-voltage tracks, which often look nothing like their predecessors because they do not have the safety issues that line-voltage systems have, and are therefore less bulky and more ornamental in themselves. A master transformer feeds all of the fixtures on the track or rod with 12 or 24 volts, instead of each light fixture having its own line to low voltage transformer. There are traditional spots and floods, as well as other small hanging fixtures. A modified version of this is cable lighting, where lights are hung from or clipped to bare metal cables under tension. A sconce is a wall-mounted fixture, particularly one that shines up and sometimes down as well. A torchier is an uplight intended for ambient lighting. It is typically a floor lamp but may be wall-mounted like a sconce. The portable or table lamp is probably the most common fixture found in many homes and offices. The standard lamp in shade that sits on a table is general lighting, while the desk lamp is considered task lighting. Magnifier lamps are also task lighting. The illuminated ceiling was once popular in the 1960s and 1970s but fell out of favor after the 1980s. 
This uses diffuser panels hung like a suspended ceiling below fluorescent lights, and is considered general lighting. Other forms include neon, which is not usually intended to illuminate anything else, but to actually be an artwork in itself. This would probably fall under accent lighting, though in a dark nightclub it could be considered general lighting. In a movie theater, steps in the aisles are usually marked with a row of small lights for convenience and safety. When the film has started and the other lights are off, Traditionally made up of small low-wattage, low-voltage lamps in a track or translucent tube, these are rapidly being replaced with lead-based versions. Outdoor lighting street lights are used to light roadways and walkways at night. Some manufacturers are designing lead and photovoltaic luminaires to provide an energy-efficient alternative to traditional street light fixtures. Floodlights can be used to illuminate outdoor playing fields or work zones during nighttime hours. The most common type of floodlights are metal halide and high-pressure sodium lights. Beacon lights are positioned at the intersection of two roads to aid in navigation. Sometimes security lighting can be used along roadways in urban areas or behind homes or commercial facilities. These are extremely bright lights used to deter crime. Security lights may include floodlights. Entry lights can be used outside to illuminate and signal the entrance to a property. These lights are installed for safety, security, and for decoration. Underwater accent lighting is also used for koi ponds, fountains, swimming pools and the like. Vehicle use. Vehicles typically include headlamps and tail lights. Headlamps are white or selective yellow lights placed in the front of the vehicle, designed to illuminate the upcoming road and to make the vehicle more visible. Many manufacturers are turning to LED headlights as an energy-efficient alternative to traditional headlamps. Tail and brake lights are red and emit light to the rear so as to reveal the vehicle's direction of travel to following drivers. White rear-facing reversing lamps indicate that the vehicle's transmission has been placed in the reverse gear, warning anyone behind the vehicle that it is moving backwards, or about to do so. Flashing turn signals on the front, side, and rear of the vehicle indicate an intended change of position or direction. In the late 1950s, some automakers began to use electroluminescent technology to backlight their car's speedometers and other gauges or to draw attention to logos or other decorative elements. Lamps, commonly called light bulbs, lamps are the removable and replaceable part of a light fixture, which converts electrical energy into electromagnetic radiation. While lamps have traditionally been rated and marketed primarily in terms of their power consumption, expressed in watts, proliferation of lighting technology beyond the incandescent light bulb has eliminated the correspondence of wattage to the amount of light produced. For example, a 60W incandescent light bulb produces about the same amount of light as a 13W compact fluorescent lamp. Each of these technologies has a different efficacy in converting electrical energy to visible light. Visible light output is typically measured in lumens. This unit only quantifies the visible radiation and excludes invisible infrared and ultraviolet light. A wax candle produces on the close order of 13 lumens, a 60-watt incandescent lamp makes around 700 lumens, and a 15-watt compact fluorescent lamp produces about 800 lumens, but actual output varies by specific design. Rating and marketing emphasis is shifting away from wattage and towards lumen output, to give the purchaser a directly applicable basis upon which to select her lamp. Lamp types include Ballast. A ballast is an auxiliary piece of equipment designed to start and properly control the flow of power to discharge light sources such as fluorescent and high-intensity discharge lamps. Some lamps require the ballast to have thermal protection. Fluorescent light. A tube coated with phosphor containing low-pressure mercury vapor that produces white light 
halogen. Incandescent lamps containing halogen gases such as iodine or bromine, increasing the efficacy of the lamp versus a plain incandescent lamp. Neon, a low-pressure gas contained within a glass tube. The color emitted depends on the gas. Light-emitting diodes. Light-emitting diodes are solid-state devices that emit light by dint of the movement of electrons in a semiconductor material. Compact fluorescent lamps. CFLs are designed to replace incandescent lamps in existing and new installations. Design in architecture. Architectural lighting design. Lighting design as it applies to the built environment is known as architectural lighting design. Lighting of structures considers aesthetic elements as well as practical considerations of quantity of light required, occupants of the structure, energy efficiency and cost. Artificial lighting takes into account the amount of daylight received in an internal space by using daylight factor calculation. For simple installations, hand calculations based on tabular data are used to provide an acceptable lighting design. More critical or optimized designs now routinely use mathematical modeling on a computer using software such as Radiance which can allow an architect to quickly undertake complex calculations to review the benefit of a particular design. In some design instances, materials used on walls and furniture play a key role in the lighting effect less than for example dark paint tends to absorb light, making the room appear smaller and more dim than it is, whereas light paint does the opposite. In addition to paint, reflective surfaces also have an effect on lighting design. Photometric studies Photometric studies are often used to simulate lighting designs for projects before they are built or renovated. This enables architects, lighting designers, and engineers to determine whether a proposed lighting setup will deliver the amount of light intended. They will also be able to determine the contrast ratio between light and dark areas. In many cases these studies are referenced against IESNA or CIBSE recommended lighting practices for the type of application. Depending on the type of area, different design aspects may be emphasized for safety or practicality. Specialized software is often used to create these, which typically combine the use of two-dimensional digital CAD drawings and lighting calculation software, on stage and set. Lighting illuminates the performers and artists in a live theater, dance, or musical performance, and is selected and arranged to create dramatic effects. Stage lighting uses general illumination technology and devices configured for easy adjustment of their output characteristics. The setup of stage lighting is tailored for each scene of each production. Dimmers, colored filters, reflectors, lenses, motorized or manually aimed lamps, and different kinds of flood and spot lights are among the tools used by a stage lighting designer to produce the desired effects. A set of lighting cues are prepared so that the lighting operator can control the lights in step with the performance. Complex theater lighting systems use computer control of lighting instruments. Motion picture and television production use many of the same tools and methods of stage lighting, especially in the early days of these industries. Very high light levels were required and heat produced by lighting equipment presented substantial challenges. Modern cameras require less light, and modern light sources emit less heat.